What's going on on my YouTube? It is, I'm Jacob, and welcome to another installment of Superhero Saturdays, where each and every Saturday I review a specific film in the superhero genre. And in this week's video, I'll be taking a look at the 2005 release, Fantastic Four. During a space voyage, four scientists are altered by cosmic rays. Reed Richards gains the ability to stretch his body. Sue Storm can become invisible. Johnny Storm controls fire. And Ben Grimm is turned into a super strong thing. Together, these Fantastic Four must now thwart the evil plans of Doctor Doom and save the world from certain destruction. So Fantastic Four was released in 2005. This, of course, was based off of the famous Marvel comic book. This was one of the first, I think, big Marvel comic books and they're often regarded as Marvel's first family because of how successful that team up was. I think it was like the first team up comic book if I'm not mistaken. The film version was released in 2005 and directed by Tim Story, a director you may know for also directing films such as the recent Tom and Jerry movie, a film called Barbershop, and he also directed the infamous Shaft movie from 2019, which was absolutely terrible. Fantastic Four, despite mixed to negative reviews from critics, it was a mild success at the box office, and it was successful enough that it did warrant a sequel, which I'll probably dive into in a future installment of Superhero Saturdays. Fun fact, this was one of the first comic book movies I ever watched. Uh, I remember I was in like an after-school daycare group, uh, when I was a kid, and one of the movies we watched to pass the time was the Fantastic Four movie, and I wasn't really into superheroes at the time. I think at that time, like, the only superhero thing I actually loved was, like, The Incredibles, the Pixar movie. And so I got into Fantastic Four, and at the time, I thought the movie was pretty cool. Of course, years later, I would watch the Fantastic Four movies a lot with the Spider-Man stuff, the Batman stuff, and all that once I started getting into the superhero genre. But as time has passed, I think I've came to realize that the Fantastic Four movies haven't really aged as well compared to like Superman and Batman. And of course, the MCU's grown bigger since then, and those movies have been amazing. So Fantastic Four has kind of been left in the dust. And this is the first time I have re-watched Fantastic Four in several years. So what do I think of this movie? I don't think it's that good of a movie, you guys. I'm sorry. There, you, if you grew up with this movie, I guess you might be nostalgic for it. I'm a little bit nostalgic for this movie, but the nostalgia did not save the film for me. There's quite a bit of issues with this movie. Going into my positives first, I think the central setup of the movie is pretty good. Like, I actually did like the first... 15 minutes of the movie which sets up the characters and them going off into space to examine stuff and then you know they get hit by these rays and then the slow buildup of them you know getting their powers is actually pretty cool and then the movie goes downhill after that like there's just so many story ideas in this movie which do not work. Uh, one of which involves Ben Grimm who becomes the thing you know he turned into this big rock creature type thing and he's the character you're supposed to sympathize with as he it takes him a while to accept uh the change in his body and because he views himself as a freak of nature and what the, just the story surrounding that just does not work because he goes back to his fiance who he was supposed to marry and you know they had that you know they made that deal you know they'd be together no matter what and she just like straight up dumps him just and seeing the change in his appearance 
And even after the first big action scene where uh, the four saved the day on the New York Bridge, you know, everyone's celebrating him as hero, and she's just like, screw that, you're a freak of nature, bye-bye. And it, it, you, think, you think he'd move on from that, I guess, because she was just a jerk to him? But that's the problem with this movie is the four, the, or three of the four characters in this movie. The middle act of this movie is them moping and doping about having a disease and then trying to cure their own disease, pretty much. And they don't really become the Fantastic Four until the third act of the movie, where they shoehorn in a villain at the last minute and they defeat the villain and they become the Fantastic Four in the end. And that's pretty much a missed opportunity because. You expect to see light-hearted action. You expect to see quippy banter with these characters. But the movie's just a chore to watch because it doesn't develop the characters well. Like, half of the movie is, oh, I hate that I have these abilities. Let's just stay, let's just stay quarantined in this building and try to cure ourselves. And that, that's not an exciting narrative. And just the whole movie just grounds to a halt after the first action scene. Just the storytelling is not that good. I will say the performances aren't that bad. Like, I like uh, Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm. He gave a solid performance, especially after becoming the Fang. There's some uh, solid layers to his character. I don't mind. The whole thing of his fiance doesn't work, but he still plays the character very well. The standout, I must say, is Chris Evans, who long before playing Captain America played Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, a complete opposite of character compared to Captain America. He's like the hothead, ladies' man, rebel character who does not care about what anybody says and just does whatever he wants. Chris Evans does that portrayal as well. And of all the actors that are playing these characters, Chris Evans seemed to be the one who was enjoying the material the most. Ian Gruffudd, I think I say his name, as Reed Richards. He was okay. The script didn't really do much to make his character interesting, but he plays the part okay. The biggest miscast, though, I'm not too crazy on Jessica Alba as Sue Storm. I have a feeling she was only cast because of how attractive she is, and they're just she just doesn't have the range, I don't think, as an actress to carry on a character with such weight as the Invisible Woman, and her performance, I think, was the most wooden of the four. She definitely stuck out like a sore thumb compared to the other actors. Not saying Jessica Alba's terrible by any means. She's been in movies where I've enjoyed her performance, like Sin City for instance, but it just does not work. I'm not a fan of her performance in Fantastic Four. I also think the villain in this movie, Doctor Doom, is pretty lame. Like They set him up too late in the game to be a villain and it just came off as very forced. And just his old motivations didn't really make much sense to me at all. Like, he blames his old friend Reed Richards for stealing his spotlight, even though Reed Richards was the one who came up with the idea to go into space, and he was just the one funding it. So his revenge scheme made no sense to me at all. And I just was not a fan of the character and how he was portrayed at the end of the day. I know people have claimed that Doctor Doom is one of the best comic book villains of all time, but you don't really see that in this portrayal of the character. I'm not familiar with how the character is supposed to be portrayed. I'm just familiar with Doctor Doom in this and the Fant Four Stick reboot from 2015, which is garbage as well. This version of Doctor Doom just came off as lame and uninspiring. Also, the visual effects have not aged well either. Some of the practical effects have aged very well. Like, I like the prosthetic work done to create the thing. I thought that was very well done. But some of the CGI in this has not aged very well at all. Like, some of the stretchy effects on Reed Richards as he's stretching his body in some scenes look ridiculously fake in today's standards. And it took me out of the movie fast. And a lot of visual effects are like that. And the action scenes. I think the first one on the bridge is passable. I think that one is okay at best. Even though the, exec the, the setup of that scene I thought was pretty ridiculous. But the main sequence itself was okay. The final sequence is so unremarkable though. There was no urgency. There was no stakes in the final act of the movie. That... I kept dozing off during the third act on this rewatch. I thought it was a very boring third act. 
And that's the big problem with this movie is there's good setup, but there's no payoff. The movie tries to be a compelling origin story, but it's hard rooting for these characters. When half the movie, they're just quarantined in their own building, not wanting to be superheroes. And that was a that was a pretty selfish thing to do for these characters. Even though Johnny is the rebellious hotshot who can't act like a jerk at times, especially to the other Fantastic Four, he's the character that made the most sense to me. Because he's like... We got these abilities, let's just use them. And that was the character I enjoyed the most. And Chris Evans is the one who embraced the character the most of all the four actors in this movie. So overall, the Fantastic Four movie, it's a movie that, yes, I have a nostalgia for this movie, but it's one of those where it just doesn't hold up as well as you remember it being. There are far better superhero movies out there. Not the worst thing in the world, which is weird saying because I think overall I like the cast in Fant Four Stick better, but that movie was executed a lot worse, and it's the worst of the Fantastic Four movies. This one, not all of the casting works, but I think this movie is better put together and structured overall than Fant Four Stick. I did like some of the performance. I like the setup of this movie, but the movie does not have a good payoff, and it pales in comparison to some of the other superhero movies that have come before and have come out since. It's sad we have not gotten a great Fantastic Four movie. I'm going to revisit the sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, pretty soon in this series to see how it stands. I know Fan Four Stick is garbage. It's one of the worst comic book movies I've ever seen in my life. Hopefully, now that the Fantastic Four is back in the MCU, uh, hopefully Kevin Feige can produce an excellent Fantastic Four movie, and it'll turn out well. I know there's one in development. John Watts is directing it. Very excited to see that, because I've enjoyed John Watts' previous Marvel films, the Spider-Man films he's directed. So I'm excited to see what the Fantastic Four is going to bring over on the MCU. This Fantastic Four, I, it, it definitely one that I think... I can see why it latched on to some people in 2005, but I feel like it's a movie that should stay in 2005. It's one of those, they tried, but wasn't executed to the very best. And it's just not as memorable compared to the other Marvel films, whether in the MCU or not in the MCU. This one just does not stick the landing at the end of the day. So for me, I'll be giving Fantastic Four a 2 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 36 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Fantastic Four as part of my Superhero Saturday series, where each and every Saturday I'll be reviewing specific films in the superhero comic book genre, whether Marvel, DC, or anything in between. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Superhero Saturdays playlist, where you can check out some of the other comic book superhero reviews I've done. In this series, uh, I've reviewed films so far. I've reviewed Hellboy. I've reviewed Black Widow. I've done some collabs lately, like a collab with Black Tastic Media, where we talked about the Blade Trilogy. Currently going through the Superman franchise with Rashad G. Reviews. There's definitely a lot of potential in this project and series, so feel free to share your requests in the comments below what comic book movies I should tackle in this series in the near future. And if you want to catch up on my past Superhero Saturday videos, feel free to click the link in the description below to check out the previous reviews I've done in this series. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Superhero Saturday videos. If you've seen Fantastic Four, let me know down in the comments below what you follow the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. It's clobbering time.